Hello and welcome back to Sunny Beadnell, part two. Got the first bait out. I'm fishing just behind the harbour area. It's turned out to be an absolutely cracking day. There's barely a cloud in the sky now. That easterly wind's still coming off the sea there, but it's not too cold, but I think it might be a little bit later. So I've got a full crab out there. I've put it out about, I don't know, 70, maybe 80 yards. Much deeper venue this than uh, where I was before. These rocks, I don't know if you can see behind me, they just continue to do that. And probably 15, 20 yards in front of me is where that thick jungly kelp starts and it goes out for quite a while around here. So I've got the bait in the water, it's been in about five minutes. Cracking evening, I've seen a couple of guys walking towards the point there. Oh, I've just been getting a knock. Right on cue. Little bit of slack line there, so I'm just gonna pick the rod up. What sometimes happens is you'll either get a re oh, yeah, he's pulling. You'll get a really aggressive bite down or you'll get a load of slack. Oh, yeah, coming right back there. Definitely something going on. I'm gonna give that another. If he knocks again, I'm gonna hit it. Yep, I'm gonna strike that. Yep, we've got him. First cast, we are in. It doesn't feel a bad fish either. It does not feel a bad fish. He'll be going, he'll be diving into that kelp. Yep, he's not bad. He's pulling back. This is the beauty of this reel. It's just effortlessly cranking through there. This doesn't feel a bad fish. Now, it's sometimes deceiving because the fish will be going for the kelp all the time. Yep, I can see him. He's coming now. He's got to be a little bit careful. He's not a bad fish. He's not a bad fish at all. Right. Get the leader onto the reel. Yep, he's a bit bigger than the last one. He's a lovely cod. Well, what a start. Just nicely hooked in the lip. Look at that. Been fishing all of about six or seven minutes. Lovely, plump little cod. I'd say he's probably two and three quarters. I'm not sure he'd make three. Again, resident fish. His belly is absolutely full and I can feel crabs or something in there. It's probably about, as I say, he might go two and three quarters. Lovely marked fish. Look at that in the sunlight. Whoops. What a prime example of a Northumberland summer codlin. Superb. What a start. And you know what? Because that bait is so fresh and he was just nick lip hooked. I'm going to be Mr. Lazy again and just cast it straight back out. Hopefully that means there's a few of them and there was some stiff competition out there. Now, I'm going against all the rules of typical fishing, particularly match fishing. Should be getting fresh bait out there, blah, blah. I know, but I'm pleasure fishing and that bait hadn't been in long. And there's still that lovely orange juice that you get when you first put a crab on, so it's plenty fresh. A cod's just in a pool there, so he's swimming away. I'll put him back in a minute. Well, what a cracking start to the session. A bit careful. Getting a big bow line, but there's so much depth out there. You can just put your hand on the spool and the depth will just pull that bow in, so nicely out there. Just put him back in a quiet pool over there, he just swam away really strong, he was only lip hooked. I do like seeing them swim away strongly, it's nice, especially in this clear water. Well, just been baiting that other rig up and I've just seen that I've had a bite, a little bit of slack line. I said earlier, you want to keep your rod low and everything not too tight. You don't want to be pulling it into a snag, but 
taut enough so you can just wind your take up any little bit of slack and use the full length of the rod to strike into the fish. And if he is on, you, you don't want to be pumping and winding rough brown. You just keep that rod tip up and just crank and crank. No, just leave that a minute. This little rig. Whilst keeping a keen eye on that rod. This venue is equally as rough as Newton, where I was earlier. But the advantage you've got here compared to there, particularly now when I'm nearly approaching high water and just the general kind of geology of this area, you're fishing into deeper water, so you've got, once you do get that fish up and moving, you've got a, a little bit more of a chance to try and get it up out the kelp. I'm not saying you always will, because the fish will always try and dive back into it, especially if it's a decent fish. But it's not like in Newton or some of the other venues where you're dragging fish just across and through and it's, and it's a lot more difficult. Same rig, pulley rig, six ounce gripper, 25 link a rotten bottom with a little rotten bottom link. Imp, single hook again, and I'm using those 4 0 Aberdeens just to try and give myself a chance to get out of any snag. Clipped up, ready to go. There's always the question of fishing rough ground. Do you go for a, do you go for a gripper or do you go for a single bomb? I've used both over the years and sometimes I find that a plain sinker will just kind of slide through the kelp a lot easier than what a gripper will. Obviously once your gripper snapped out it should be a bit easier but the other theory is that a gripper, you know, if you've got some really fine crevices and ravines in the rocks it'll stop it from sliding down and getting trapped. I don't know, I'm not sure if one's right, one's wrong, I mean to be honest, I don't think anything's right or wrong in fishing. I just think there's different, different ideas. Some work better than others. But throwing gear into the ground like this, you know, one day you might be using plain sinkers, getting everything back. The guy next to you might be using grippers, losing it the other way. It might be, it might be the other way around. You just, you just don't know. The ground's so varied. You just got to fish with what you feel confident and comfortable fishing with, I suppose. trivia about Beadnell Harbour is that it's one of the only west-facing harbours on the east coast. So if you ever find yourself in a Northumberland pub doing a quiz and that comes up, you know the answer. Of course the advantage of fishing a mark like this is that you can have a couple of casts, if you're not getting any bites, you can just shift along 50, 100, 150 yards, a couple of casts, maybe one longer, one shorter. If you don't get anything, keep moving around. You can just keep covering a lot of ground and give yourself the best chance of pulling something out. Personally, right now, because I've had that fish and then had another bite, I'm obviously going to give it another shot, but I'll have this cast, probably another one, and if, if I don't get anything, then I'll, I'll probably think about shifting. Well, I think, I think I'm gonna shift along. Not very far, maybe 100 yards, if that, max. Just try a little bit of different ground. Keep moving around, see if we can, see if we can pull something out. Something else out, I should say. A bit further along, let's see what a little change of spot does. I have to say, being sat here like this is absolutely glorious. Well, 
Well, the bait's been out for quite a while. Hasn't had any interest. So I've got one more rig baited up. I say hasn't had any interest. There's actually something, something on here. Oh, come on. It's not a big fish, if it is a fish, but it's definitely a bit of weight on. Yep, there's a fish out there. Strange, classic case of a fish lying on without, without you knowing it. Yep, very small. Very small codlin, but welcome a fish all the same. See him there, little fella. He's starting to go a bit red, but he's slightly fresher. Still quite gold in colour, but not quite as red. We'll get him straight back. Yep, he's away. This is the advantage of this spot at high tide. Because these rocks go down at about, I don't know, 30 degrees gradient, you can just place yourself back a little bit, a little bit high and you get a bit more height above the water, which is, which is handy. Just got a little bit of slack line there, but it's probably... I'd love it if it was a fish, I don't think it is though. Right, last cast. It's been an absolutely terrific day. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. It's had its ups and downs, slightly frustrating at times, but that's, that's just heavy ground fishing for you. It's never gonna be easy when you're casting a thick kelp and rock, but we've managed to have three fish out, a couple of nice kelpies, so it's been a decent day. I'm going to watch this rod for another 15, 20 minutes and then I think I'm going to get myself home, get some tea. Who knows, I might even have a beer to see the end of the Jubilee weekend. Right, well, I did have a couple of touches before. There's either another small fish lying on. we snag snagged as a lobster's put us in a hole, or oh, there's no bait left, so let's see. Oh, definitely snagged, that's for sure. I'm just going to take up the slack. Oh, just felt that move a bit there. There's a little bit of weight on this. There's a little bit of weight. Oh, it's just gone a bit lighter. I think there might be, could be a small fish on there. I feel a bit of, a bit of weight. It's staying Staying down in the water. Now yep, we've got another small codlin to finish the day off. He's a bit redder that one. Hopefully you can see the sunset shining on him. We'll get him unhooked and get him back. Well, that's the end of the session. It's been a good day. The weather's been very kind. We achieved what we set out to do, which was to get a couple of Northumberland codlin, which we've done. So, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully you've been able to see a little bit of Northumberland, a couple of fish as well. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Keep fishing. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.